As you can see, this is an extensive bed of rock, and it has been um, engraved, not painted, but engraved with pictures over time. And we suspect that there may be other rock that's under the soil currently that might even have more pictures. But um, these pictures, we, we feel, are probably quite old. Now, we see some horseshoe designs, and that would suggest that um, they're not any older than 1650. A little while, you're going to see a, a very large snake over there. And if you look all around at your feet, you will see flint chips because this area had been occupied for a long time by native peoples and they were making their tools right in this area. <laughs> we are conducting a survey of Comanche Indian traditional cultural properties at Fort Hood, Texas. Our project has three components. Uh, historical research working in the archives, uh, working directly with Comanche informants of today to collect their oral histories and knowledge about the area. And a final report that summarizes this information and makes recommendations to the U.S. Army about the possibility of preserving some of these places. Today we had 26 members of the tribe, all elders, who came from Oklahoma to visit Fort Hood, and we took them around to a number of the most important and accessible sites. Jimmy collected this and uh, said it's a type of tea that they used. It might be uh, a medicine for a cold or something like that. It has a very bitter taste. We're going to check out the species. We wanted you to see Sugarloaf Mountain, and we can't go any closer because it's on the live fire range, and oh, you may yeah. see there's a tank over there and they're using their machine gun, so we don't want to go any closer. But um, back in March of 1859, a Comanche war party came down and they came all the way down this valley and they took horses from all the settlements. And there was a nice little settlement there at the foot of Sugarloaf Mountain. And uh, the raiders uh, killed four individuals and they took away two little girls. <laughs> because the Comanches took the lead on the re first reburial stuff, they wanted to honor us and name it after us. So that's how it got the name Comanche Indian Mission, or National Indian Cemetery. Mm -hmm. We talked to the elders and gathered their reminiscences about past practices. And we also talked with them about the local environments of these places to see how Indians of the past would have used these places and been attracted to them. This is another um, formation that shows up on all of the early maps, even when they don't name a lot of the mountains, they always name twin mountains. And as you probably know, in Comanche tradition, there are a number of twin mountains throughout Texas, uh, and, and they have uh, often served as important landmarks. Take it out of that, copy a baby cradle. Mm -hmm. Got a baby cradle on her back. Yeah. It looped around that area and met that band going this way and they followed it out towards the west. Looks like they could have been going even 
from here back then towards Palador or that area. Okay, okay. So they were over here, right? Right. And they were going that going way. Because Snake's Head was going that way. Right. So that, that would be the direction. That would be the direction. Okay. We've got a great team in our DPW Environmental Natural Resources Division. I know they've been hosting you and helping you get around the training area. And uh, I'm just excited about the opportunity that you all have had. And so if there are any questions that I can answer, you know, over the course of lunch today, um, I'd be happy to do that. But I just wanted to say welcome uh, to Fort Hood. I hope your experience has been uh, as good these past two days as mine has been for these past two months, or correction, two years, because um, I'm getting ready to leave and it's going to be sad to leave Fort Hood because uh, we've had such a, uh, a good experience here. So again, welcome. And with that, uh, I'll turn it over uh, uh, to the doctor here. We're going to do some presentations. This was once Comanche land, and uh, these uh, fine gentlemen have been entrusted with caring, it, caring for it, and you all have helped them tremendously in that important role. And so they're expressing their appreciation today. We're hoping that our study will really be a model for other studies of this kind. It's been a great example of cooperation between the Army and the Comanche tribe. 